Hello and welcome to this video. So it's time now to fill in the collect candles part which means we need to use the Oanda API. Before we do that here I want to go to the Oanda API and the fetch candles function. Now there is a slight issue in the way that this function is written so down the bottom here we're getting the response and then we're returning the response status code and the response.json. Now it could be that we don't actually have anything inside the response at all so that when we call this json we're calling on something that doesn't exist and the program will crash. While 99.9% .9 of the time everything works okay, if you get a small drop in internet connection or something like this, or there's something wrong on Oanda's side, you're going to need to write in your code a way to deal with unexpected errors. So we're going to put something in here just to deal with this uh, issue where we might not get any kind of response. Irrespective of what we get in the response body, we will get a code, so we can use that. So we're going to write, if response.statuscode is not equal to 200, then we'll return response.statuscode, comma, none. And that way we won't be trying to call the JSON function on something that doesn't exist. So back then in our history data collection, we're going to need to find some way to convert the candles that we collect from the Oanda API into data frames. Now you remember very early on in the course we did this save candles notebook, and very handily in here we wrote ourselves a function called get candles data frame, which does exactly what we need. So we're just going to copy that entire function. And above the create file, create file, I'm just going to paste it in there like that, and we can reuse that just as it is. So inside the create file, then we can start making our collection of candles. I'm just going to remove this print here, make a little bit of space. So we're going to say that code, comma, JSON data is equal to api.fetch candles. Then we have our pair, our granularity is equal to granularity, our date from is equal to date from, and our date to is equal to date to. So now we want to check a couple of things. One is the code 200, and two, if it is 200, do we have any candles? So we'll type, if code is equal to 200, and the length of our JSON data with the key candles is greater than zero. So we know then that we have some candles on the code 200, so we can type candledfs.append, and then get candles data frame JSON data. Now a problem that could occur is that we don't have a 200, which means we've missed out some candles in our data collection. This of course is pretty bad. So we're going to type elif code is not equal to 200. We will print then error pair granularity date from date to and break. So just a quick word to what we've written here. So here we're saying that if there's an issue whilst we're collecting the data, and in rare occasions there are, it's not very often in my experience, but it can happen, then we're just going to break out of the loop. That means obviously you have incomplete data for whatever pair and granularity were being collected at that time. That means then that if you want to collect those, probably you have to do a bit of fiddling around with these pair lists and things like this to make sure you just recollect the data that you were missing. Ideally what you want to do, and this is what I've done in my own trading systems, is at the top of create file you want to write something that gets your date from. It sets the date from to whatever you want, but then it looks to see if there's a file already available with the pair and granularity, checks what the last date is there, and sets date from to that, and starts from there, and appends it to any existing file. That would be more robust, but the way we're doing it here is good enough for this course, because we just need to collect a bunch of data to be able to test the strategy. Now we have this information, we have a list of candle DFs that is full of data frames for all the time periods we've collected. So what we want to do then is we want to type final df is equal to pd.concat candle DFs. And that will have made a huge data frame now of all the data frames we've collected for the particular pair and granularity. Now it might be due to the dates from and date to and certain other things in the API that we have a duplication of times. In my experience this can happen. So what we're going to do is type final df dot drop duplicates subset is equal to time and in place is true. And then what we want to do is we want to sort by time in ascending order. So we'll type final df dot sort values by equals time and in place equals true. Last but not least, we want to save our final data frame to a file with the correct name and the correct granularity using the get his data file name from our utils. And there's a last sentence here. I would just like to print off what we've saved so we know where we are if anything breaks. So we'll print formatted string, the pair, the granularity, the final data frame, first row dot time, and the final data frame, last row dot time. In my hist data on the left, I've actually cleared out all of the files in there. I'm going to go up to increments and just comment out the H1 and the M5 for now and just run the four hour candles. 
and I'll hold my breath in the console and uh, run collect his data dot pi and see what happens. Okay, and that's running, and we seem to be collecting a lot of candles from 2018 to the end of uh, 2020 for each of the currency pairs. And back in Visual Studio Code, you can see that I've got the four hour candles here. Okay, so what I'm going to do then, but we don't need to do it in the video, is uncomment the M5 and the H1 and just collect down all this data as well. So we've got a good bunch of files for testing later on. And that's then it for this video. So we've got a basic script for collecting historical data. Like I've already mentioned, you can make this a little bit more, more robust by reading in the files you've already saved and understanding where you need to append the data. But for our purposes, it's uh, good enough. And onwards and upwards. Thanks very much for watching and see you in the next video.